So now we're going to talk about using something called Windows Explorer. And if you're on a Macintosh, this is actually known as Finder, but it does roughly the same thing. So as you can see, we're on my desktop, and if I want to access my Windows Explorer, I have a few different ways I can do that. The first one is, you might notice you have a little folder icon right here on your taskbar, and if I click on that, that'll take me to it. But what happens if you don't? That's actually where the Start menu can come into play. If I click on that Start menu, you can see I get a, a slew of the files and programs that I use very commonly or have recently used. I don't see Windows Explorer here, so what can I do? Well, this is actually where we can get into my All Programs. Inside my All Programs, I have access to all of the programs on my computer that are currently installed that have been put into my Start menu such as GIMP or Audacity, which I use to you know, record these videos. But if I want to go into Windows Explorer, I want to explore one of the more underrated, uh, underappreciated folders, known as Accessories. Inside Accessories, you have a lot of programs that are already installed on your computer by default when you install your Windows operating system, such as the calculator. If you didn't know you had a calculator on your computer, guess what? You have a calculator on your computer. But let's take a look at something else. Let's take a look at some of those other ones. For example, Notepad. You want to jot down a quick little note. That's exactly what this does. I don't need Windows Explorer. Oh, I don't need Microsoft uh, Word to do that. I can actually use something like Notepad. But the one I want to focus in on right now is that Windows Explorer. Again, if I click on this, that's going to pull up this man behind the curtain application this program that actually lets me peer into sort of, sort of the inner workings of my computer and right now we're in something known as my library which allows me to just store some of my user files for example let's double click on my pictures now you probably have something very similar to what I have here every Windows 7 application actually comes with these sample pictures. These are actually used to help us learn how to use Windows. If we double click on them, guess what you get to see? You get the chrysanthemum in the uh, desert and my fa personal favorite, the cute koala. He's so cute. Look at him. You know, those things are crazy though. So let's take a look at another one. Uh, how do I go to another one of those folders or see some of the other sample files? Well, let's say for example, you can see on the left hand side of the screen I have my navigation pane. Now my navigation pane allows me just like on a website to go to different points on my computer. So let's go to music for example. Again this allows me, you can see I have my iTunes on here, but we all probably have this sample music folder. And if we double click in there, guess what? We actually have a few songs of ourselves. So Let's click on one. Let's click on Kalimba. That's kind of my favorite one that I have to show for you guys. What will happen is... Oh yeah! Bet you didn't know that was it. Okay, enough of that. That was scary. So, you can see we have a slew of these things. But let's actually dig a little deeper. Those are known as user files or data files. But let's actually take a look at some of the more system files. The programs that run our computer. So if we look at here on the navigation side, I want to click on computer. This is going to give me access to all the storage devices currently hooked up to my computer. For example, you see local disk. That's actually where my hard drive is. Now why does it start with C? Well, that's actually because A and B are reserved for floppy diskette drives. I know those sound very old and archaic, but remember the computer still has to have that and so by default that's actually why we start with the C drive. If you're on a Mac or Linux machine you're gonna notice you don't have letter drives. That's because Macs and Linuxes don't do that. They actually have something called a, the root directory. And then you can see we have uh, my DVD burner or my flash drive which I store all of my files. Now if I double click on say for example local drive or local disk that's actually going to take me to the Windows version of the root directory. This is where all of my files reside, somewhere in here. For example, let's dig a little deeper. You might have this program files x86. You should actually. Now, 
why does it say x86? This is actually a throwback to the olden days when we had a 32-bit processor. Most computers don't have 32 bits now, but a lot of programs are still built off of that basis of using 32 bits. It's kind of crazy. That's actually why we have these two. But let's double click on Program Files x86. This is actually going to show you all of the programs currently installed on your computer. It's almost a more in-depth version than the start menu. And you can see we have a slew of these. You, know, you might not have all the same ones. You might not have something like Audacity, but I'm pretty certain you probably have something like Microsoft Office. Let's double click on that. Again, we're seeing what are known as folders. And folders just reside, allow us to have more in-depth uh, look. So not everything's in one spot. It allows us to have a little bit more organization. And for example, if we double click now on Office 15, you might be seeing Office 14 or one of the other versions. But if we click on the folder that starts with Office, you can actually see as we scroll downward, this is where all of my files for all of Microsoft Office reside. So if you really wanted to copy things, this is where it is. This is where all those things are. So if we take a look, I've already sorted mine, but if I want to just look at my programs, just look at the programs, I can click on this type button and that'll actually sort everything in alphabetical order by its type. You can see all of these have something called application. Now, if we look, some of these actually make a little sense. I know some of them are a little confusing, but Excel.exe, we're going to be using Microsoft Excel in our module three. What happens if we double click on it? Oh, hey, look at that. That's actually where Microsoft Excel is residing on my computer. It's not just a single button. If we scroll down a little further, you can see that we get some crazy, like, oh my goodness, these things look weird. These are known as application extensions. These are, they're not, these are those system files I was talking about a little earlier. I don't want to delete these. I don't want to mess with these because these help run my computer, run my programs, such as uh, Audio Search LTS. I don't know what it does, but that name sounds a little important. Audio Search, probably a little bit important. So take a look at these things. Maybe go into your Windows folder. What's inside there? Well. You might notice up here I have this address bar, and if I click on local disk, it lets me go even to back to the root directory. Maybe double click on Windows and see what's in there for yourself.